hey guys welcome to code decode so we'll see what we have covered till now so what we have covered is what is spring why spring is so important in the it industry what are the features of spring which makes it unique what are the modules in the spring what is ioc or the container on the very high level and last how to convert a legacy java project to spring project so in many of the mncs they have created their java projects on simple bojos and their logics but now they want to move to use spring framework so that is the way we have done by converting our simple application of having the engine having a car car with uh, having a method where we are injecting the engine with a new method which we have seen in the previous video now we have converted that particular thing using autoviz the component the red components and orientation to the spring project so we have seen if you still want to know more about it let me know in the comment section i'll create a whole project of java and then we'll convert into spring today what we are going to see is more on the ioc containers the types of ioc containers how it internally worked how our java pojos converts into bean internally what are the ways to give configuration method it is the bean scoping the auto wiring the dependency section and everything in detail so let's get started hey guys in last few days we have heard a lot in the comment section about the relevel test that the cost is very high so there is a very good news today for you relevel has announced that all of their tests have been made completely free of cost so that they can give candidates the access to 10000 plus jobs across the top companies so now your search for finding the right job ends at relevel at to completely free of cost the way to do that is just five simple steps first sign up on the relevel.com Secondly select the test of your choice whether it is backend development business development or front end development once you decide your choice book a slot and when you are done give the relevel test so, create a neat and clean video resume where you can talk about your video resume should be submitted within 24 hours after selecting the slot the best part of this test i find is that all the routes are completely free Secondly it is completed in one single day and hence once you qualify the test based on your relevel score you will get to create an amazing profile which then be shared to multiple companies just sit back and relax your task is done companies will reach out to you based on your profile and the better your score the more companies will be reaching out to you relevel is conducting monthly rewards for top 50 candidates also who will make up to the leaderboards they will be provided with apple products like macbooks watches etc So all the very best. Hope you get best out of this opportunity because it's completely free now. Okay. So in the previous example, we have seen that we had a car class. We needed engine, and in a method, we are printing the engine name. In this engine, we have a particular name which is nothing but a, a property of engine, and we are giving it as a bean. So if you can see, we had a container. So this is the application context. so if you you will say that the run method returns me the configurable application context but internally if you can see this this extends application context so it's nothing but the application context container so what we are doing here is this is a container and it is giving us bean so we are asking for a car bean and it is giving us a bean and this car bean has injected engine data and hence we are able to print it so if you try to run it right now you will be able to see the engine data if you can see in a very high level what we had here was we had one container in our case this is application context we have given two pojos car pojo and engine pojo and what we got was a car bean which internally has injected engine bean so how does this happen so there must be something which tells container that if you are getting a pojo of engine and car please create beans of both and inject the engine bean into car bean so that at the end if i try to fetch engine data in the car bean i should be able to get it so the way to do that is configuration metadata very important from interview perspective so there are three ways to handle the configuration metadata or give this metadata to the container the three ways to do this is xml based then we have annotation based which we have already seen right we have used at the rate component at the rate auto wiring everything that is nothing but annotation based last thing is java configuration based very important from the interview perspective they have their own advantages and disadvantages i'll tell you here only 
if you use xml and java configuration based then all your bean definitions the scope definitions the dependency injection mechanism everything remains in one file and hence it is good from perspe performance perspective performance is high readability is high but it's very difficult that uh, you need to go and check the xml files and configuration file each and every time while creating you 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 have to create bojo and then you have to go to xmls or java configuration file to give their dependencies scope definitions and how to create a bean so it's too much of redundancy so redundancy is low is high so this is a disadvantage these are the advantages in annotation based configuration as soon as you create a bojo you give your annotation based configuration metadata so it it reduces your time so this is advantage so time reduction is an advantage time saving thing it is you don't have no redundancy is an advantage redundancy is also low time saving is high but performance is low and readability is low why because if you have multiple packages then what container has to do is container has to go in each package and see is it annotated with component is it annotated with service is it annotated with repository so it it has to go in in each and every package and scan so component scanning reduces the performance it increases your time so that is why this is the least preference when it comes to uh, the high performance applications now you have seen the three types of configuration metadata we need to know the two types of containers we have so this is also very important from interview perspective the two containers we have is application context and bean factory now for sure interviewer may ask you the difference between them and how do you implement these two so implementing these two i'll be showing you in the live demonstration right now so we will be showcasing these two application factory context and bean factory through xml based we have seen the annotation based so we'll be seeing the uh, xml based now so i'll be removing all the annotations and i'll be expecting still the same result that my car having an engine as a property it should be able to print this so for that i'll be removing all my annotations and now this is no nothing but a simple pojo no annotations just a pojo but i still want my application context to print this if you try to do it right now it will give you an exception that car is not a bean so if you can see no such bean definition for car why because we have removed the configuration metadata here so what you need to do is you need to uh, make it either xml based so what you need is a file a file name as um, you can say is application context okay so you can see this is my application context xml file so it is nothing but the xml uh, definitions the context xsds the, the the place where you will get all your xsds this is nothing but a place where you will get all your xsds the schema locations basically now once you are done with this you need to create your beans here so we need two beans first is the engine and second is the car so and the car will be having the dependency injection of engine so we'll be seeing two things here the first thing is to create a bean of engine so how to create a bean so bean id equals to say i'll say car bean and this is necessary to dis di display where your car bean is present so, so the class is car but it needs fully qualified class name so you need the package name dot your class name so what's the class name that's car simple now if you have done that you have to close your bean definition but it's not just it we are just creating beans right now the dependency injection will see in 2 seconds so now again i have to create another uh, bean that is engine and the class will be the same engine in the same package so simple as that now we have created beans r should have engine so this is dependency injection you are injecting engines dependency into car so the basically there are two ways to do that that is setter injection and the second is constructor injection currently i am doing the setter injection for you so setter injection is through property property your name equals to then the name should be same as what you have here in the car so the name is engine so i am taking here is the property name as engine and 
now you need a reference so reference equals to nothing but this engine here so now you are doing a dependency injection you are saying that please inject this bean id as an id you are giving a reference so please inject this bean into this bean property the property is nothing but engine this is the property please inject into this if you are doing the setter injection you first need a setter here so if you try to run this it will give you an exception i'll show you how first we'll create a uh, xml application context so this is a very important part now here i'm creating a container for you so remember this there is a way to create containers the two ways to create a container is application context and bean factory first i'm creating application context for you now i'm i'm creating from xml class path so this is class path xml application context simple and what i'm going to give here is my xml file name in the class path so what's my xml class file in the class path that is nothing but application context dot xml simple is that now if you have this in place i have my context in place i'm trying to get bean it is going to give me an error it says it will it is going to say me that you do not have setters it is not writable because there is no setter so let's see yes the exception comes invalid property engine not writable property because the setter is not there invalid setter so what now you need to do is go to your class and provide a setter method getters and setters so select all now you are able to generate your getters and setters now let's try to run it again great it it prints what it needs so this is nothing but setter injection what is another way to do that is the constructor injection so i'll show you what is constructor injection now the way to do that is i'm going to comment it okay the way to do the constructor injection is through constructor args for constructor injection what you need is a constructor so let's quickly go in car and create a constructor with a car so source generate a constructor using a engine so this is my engine i don't need this first and this dot engine equals to this and simultaneously if i try to run it now let's see what happens okay so if you can see this is running perfectly fine our constructor injection is working perfectly fine the constructor arg is given as engine the similar output is what we get with the property injection it's just that we need a constructor for the same so this is the constructor which we require for constructor injection so now what we have seen two things is the two types of injections the dependency injection so we have seen two types of injection that is nothing but constructor injection and setter injection with this we have seen dependency injection ways now i'll show you something about bean factory now about this bean factory we have seen application context right now similar to application context we have also something called as bean factory so i'll show you the same response for that so we have bean factory context equals to now this bean factory is also fetching the day xml from the class path so we need new xml bean factory and now it's a resource so it's a new class path resource and the class path re resource is having a name named as application context dot xml again simple with this we have created a bean factory application context and we'll try to run it and see whether the response is the same one so yes the response is still the same so these are the two types of containers we have the application context and bean factory so you will quickly ask me what is the difference between the two xml bean factory implements the bean factory and 
basically we have class path xml context these many types of application context implementing the application context but internally application context extends bean factory only so application context is nothing but bean factory plus some additional things now dependency injection based on annotations is not allowed in bean factory it is allowed in application context that is why i have taken xml based uh, a configuration metadata for both the application context and bean factory because bean factory does not allow annotation based configurations Se uh, secondly the instantiation the get bean is the method used for it and it's basically the lazy loaded so until unless you don't call the get bean method so until unless you don't call the get bean method your car will not get the memory into it so it's the very important part this is lo lazy loaded while application context is eager loaded so as soon as you create application context all the beans will get memory but this bean factory it's not the case the beans will get uh, it's lazy loaded it will get the memory only and only when the get bean method is called so it's lazy loaded it's aggressive loaded that is why until unless get bean is not called bean factory instantiates bean only and only when get bean method is called while application context instantiate bean at the time of container start only a very important part is bean factory does not support internationalization application supports internationalization now we have multiple scopes we have configuration files we have we have seen already dependency injections the difference between injection is also left so we'll be covering this into the next uh, part of this thank you